So today let's talk about uh, rotating frame of reference. So uh, whenever there is a certain rotation in the part of the geometry or entire geometry is rotating at that point of time, we have a couple of options. So either we uh, straight away go with the mesh movement or we can mimic the same thing by adding certain source term inside the Navier-Stokes equations. So that is called the without even uh, rotating the geometry, we can mimic like uh, geometry is rotating or the part of the geometry is rotating. So this is normally useful for let's say turbo machinery type of uh, application where we have an impeller or any of the turbine is rotating and we have a stationary part. So how one can model this class of uh, physics. So for that we have a couple of options available in open form. One uh, s very straightforward option is a single rotating frame of reference SRF or maybe multiple frame of reference MRF. So single rotating frame of reference in that what happened we have only let's say impeller is rotating we are uh, not worry about um, the its casing or anything we want to only look at let's say impeller rotating what happening when the impeller is rotating for 100 rpm so how the velocity and pressure is distributed inside the impeller and what different class of the loading is applied on the blades of the impeller if we are only interested in that then we go with the single rotational frame of reference era srf but let's say we are also interested about uh, impeller is rotating and the casing is stationary so we have a multiple frames one is rotating another is the stationary so at that point of time we have to go with the MRF class of the things so this is two things SRF and MRF where we need not to uh, give any motion to the mesh okay and another class is the mesh motion solver where we exactly take into account the rotation of impeller rotation of turbine or any type of the flapping movement or anything okay so that is come under the mesh motion solver but in this particular session we try to talk about only about this SRF and MRF class of the the application so let's talk in detail about this so when we talk about the single rotating frame of reference so we have to have certain changes inside the Navier-Stokes equations okay so first thing is we have to add certain um, things inside the Navier-Stokes equation like corollary forces or centrifugal forces okay so uh, that forces we have to apply on uh, the Navier-Stokes equation so let's look at how exactly we can incorporate this thing before that uh, this SRF is how it's going to deal is something like this way come compute in the rotating frame of reference so entire cal calculation we going to do in the rotating frame of reference with the velocity and flux related to the rotating frame of reference like the our coordinate system is sitting on the impeller and it is rotating along the impeller so it is fixed with the rotating uh, part and along with that it is rotating and based on that we going to calculate everything okay using the Cartesian coordinate system so for that we when we fix this class of uh, frame of reference we have to add certain um, forces in the navier stokes equation like corollary forces and the centrifugal forces and we in the if you remember in the, our simple uh, form or piezo pimple form we always work with the u okay but here we going to work with the relative velocity it is not the inertia frame of reference okay so we going to work with the relative velocity and relative velocity and the inertia velocity is uh, in coupled like something like this way u r equal to u i minus omega that is the rotation and the r is the radius center uh, for, for center of rotations point of view okay so this is how one can in incorporate this uh, things within the uh, our solver and if you want to look at the entire detail then we have to rely on this particular web page okay so let me quickly show you so let's look at uh, entire detail about that particular thing okay so this is entire derivation about the MRF form development okay oh, uh, so MRM or oh, how it is appearing uh, entire derivation is here okay so if you are interested just go here and try to explore how entire uh, this equation is derived okay but more like uh, this is the summary of it okay so inertia or absolute frame of reference that is we normally observe inside the regular uh, equations okay but when we want to add uh, 
uh, forces then either we go with the rotating or relative velocity uh, formulation or absolute formulations okay so this relative formulation we're going to use for the SRF class of the calculation and uh, this absolute velocity formulation we're going to use for the MRF class of calculations okay so that is how we can uh, check how exactly the equation is look like so additional these two uh, terms one is the corollary forces and another term is called the centrifugal forces we have to add inside the momentum equation as a source term so what different change we observe when we uh, go with this so let's first observe that so what different uh, changes is appear inside the mm, our calculations so for that uh, we okay we going to use here the extended form okay so why I am going to move towards extended form because in the extended form very good facility is available for this MRF and SRF class of the calculation so okay so here is the difference in the previous all the calculation we work with the open form 3.0x okay but now we going towards the form so form extended 4.0 okay so here we have a different class of uh, uh, let's say solver is available this like uh, let's say we want to work with the grid grid interface so generalized grid interface GGI is available that is a very very powerful uh, grid interface utility that is not available in the you know, open release open form release version class of the form okay so let's uh, for this class of the calculation stick to this extended version of the open form so let's look at what difference we observe when we compare with this uh, SRF type of the uh, form with the simple form so let me go towards the application area okay so solvers application incompressible we are interested and in this let's a simple form and in the simple form I am going to open all these entities okay so here is the simple form okay let me open this SRF form so here itself you find this uh, simple SRF form okay so in the same places so I am opening that as well so let's first explore at the equation level what difference we observe okay so in the simple form if you see uh, create field we are working with the u velocity okay but in SRF form if we go with the create field we are working with the relative velocity why we are doing this because we want to work with ur not with the absolute frame of reference okay so that is the difference first difference you observe here okay uh, along with that what differences you can see in the create field file in the create field file we are creating the SRF model and with the help of this SRF model we are going to take into account this uh, corollary forces and centrifugal forces so that's why we are creating this SRF model okay here and this SRF when you create this SRF model after that that entry is supposed to go inside the navier stock equation so in the U equation you can see this entry SRF uh, and it's pointed to the the source terms okay so in the SRF model we're going to see how it is coded but right now you understand that that entry is coming from create field until unless you write these lines okay that SRF model is not accessible and when you say create the SRF model okay SRF and SRF model and new URL based on that it try to create this source term and this source term we have to add here okay so this is the uh, source term and later on inside the simple form also we can see one variation absolute so recalculate the absolute velocity is based on uh, relative plus of SRF source term why because here we want to compute this so SRF plus of this source term so based on that it try to calculate the absolute velocity so this is the certain changes we can observe first change instead of u we are working with the u relative in the create field okay so in the create field we have u relative along with that we also have to incorporate this uh, uh, few lines for creating the SRF model and based on this SRF model we able to take into account this um, SU uh, source term inside the navier stroke equation so that is the um, changes we going to observe inside the uh, our regular application area okay now let's explore exactly how it is coded inside the um, uh, at a library level so for that we have we supposed to go toward the SRC folder so please understand right now we at a application but this SRF model is implemented at the SRC level so let's go to the SRC folder inside the SRC folder we have finite volume inside the finite volume we have CFD tools inside the CFD tools we have 
generals inside the general we have mrf and srf so right now we are talking about the srf so let's look at srf inside the srf we have srf models and inside the srf model we have again model and let's open this two file it gives us the idea how exactly it is coded inside this okay so from talk let's start from here so when it call su okay so when it called su so it goes directly at here and it try to search the su so su entry is available at here okay so it try to call these functions from srf model why it able to call from this function from srf model because we incorporated in the create field files okay so it allow us to access this particular entry and here it try to calculate the f uh, corollary force and f centrifugal forces okay so this corollary forces is available here okay so this is the f corollary forces so this is how we can calculate the corollary forces and uh, then we have a f centrifugal force so this is how we can calculate the centrifugal forces okay so this uh, forces is enter inside the u equations so if you um, look at both the things we can able to enter these things here and uh, if we want to calculate the velocity okay so velocity uh, that is the u what we say if we want to calculate we can go ahead and try to use this uh, quantity to calculate the uh, u from the uh, relative reference frame to the absolute reference frame okay this is the few things you can observe and uh, this velocity is available at this particular point okay so 179 uh, lines we can see how it is coded so ultimately what we did we added on the right hand side the these two forces okay inside the navier-stokes equation with the help of this so it's called this entry and that is available at here su okay and su call uh, fv corollary fv f is centrifugals and uh, argument as argument it required the omega okay so omega we going to read uh, from the um, its directory so along with that we required the axis uh, as well as omega and the few uh, directional coefficients uh, that is we read with the help of these srf models and uh, srf model and it allow us to take into account omega axis and a few more things and with the help of that we able to calculate the single reference frame class of the tutorials so this is how uh, one can see uh, exactly what going to happen here we don't have a multiple zone we have only one uh, fluid zone and that entire fluid zone is rotating so that's why it's called a single reference frame okay in case of the mrf what happened the entire there is a stationary zone there is a rotating zone so with the help of that we can have a coupling between stationary rotating and like that way it's going to cha uh, change the uh, physics but here we have only one zone that is rotating so again what uh, what what is the biggest difference in both the cases in place of u we have a u relative velocity okay along with that we have to create this uh, models here Okay, so that is what we did here and uh, along with that when you incorporate this SRF model so it allow you to take into account this uh, source term and this source term is nothing but it is the centrif uh, corollary forces and centrifugal forces and for that what you require you have to give the certain uh, information like axis and the omega okay so axis of rotation and the speed of rotation that is in the radian per second so we have to specify this value inside the constant directory so well, let's look at how exactly one can simulate this class of the flows so for that we have a certain tutorials so let's start with very simple mixing srf uh, tutorials okay so let me quickly show you how exactly you can set up the test case and try to understand so before that first understand this entry that is required here okay so it try to ask for srf model so that entry is available inside the here so srf property file try to read that property file ultimately okay and from that property file what we're going to achieve is something like this way it required the axis and as a rpm we require the rpm coefficients what with what rpm the particular domain is rotating so axis of rotation and the rpm that is the two things we require and the model is based on the rpm based model okay so that is the uh, entry that is required for this so let's uh, explore few more thing here so let me first look at our regular files so let's first clean the case 
and please remember this case we're going to run with fe40 not uh, of30 okay so we have to initialize with the help of fe40 we are going to work with the form extended 4.0 okay and here so the, we clean the case okay and after that let's look at the block mesh block mesh file okay check mesh if you look at the mesh okay let me run it again okay so check mesh file give you the idea about the number of cells okay so we have a number of cell that many okay. we don't have any separate cell zone that is required for MRF but here we don't require because entire zone is rotating okay now let's look at paraform how entire test cases look like so it gives us the idea exactly so this is the our test case and uh, let me show you any set available nothing is available okay but when we go with the MRF uh, we require the more sets and uh, uh, zones that will take into account few more entries so first understand the this test case okay so this is let's say z axis along the z axis this entire domain is rotating why along the z axis because along the z axis is our axis and uh, it is rotating at a uh, 5000 rpm okay radian per second so this is z axis and if now let's understand few things inlet is top portion okay outlet is bottom portion fine okay and this is inner wall okay and there is a outer wall okay this is outer wall and then we have a cyclic boundary condition here so it's assume something like let's say we have an entire circular domain with a multiple this class of the blade and this entire impeller for mixing purpose is rotating along the z axis okay so you can imagine something like this way so that is the our domain of interest okay so this is the how one can see this is inner wall okay so let me switch off this so you understand this is the inner wall is nothing but the blood wall you can see something like this way okay and this is our entire domain so let me show you the names okay so this is how it look like okay so inlet outlet uh, cyclic so important here is this cyclic bc so here we specifying the cyclic bc on this okay so if you look at the cyclic bc uh, so it is almost one to one connectivity that means if we rotate by let's say uh, how much uh, 90 degree we exactly reach here if we rotate this 90 degree we reach here so like that will be rotational cyclic type of the things okay but a uh, mesh is uh, on the planar side so we don't require any arbitrary interface or anything okay so this is our uh, test case okay where entire of this domain is rotating along the z axis with a 5000 rpm when it is rotating what going to happen when it is rotating at a 5000 rpm <coughs> so from the solver point of view it try to add this uh, forces here corollary forces and the centripetal forces uh, as these two forces that we observe here so these two forces is added in the momentum equation and it try to mimic like in actual case this entire uh, solid body is rotating so it is something like solid body type of the rotation without any deformation or without any mesh movement okay so that is how one can quickly check uh, exactly what is happening here now let's uh, solve this particular test case so we have an idea what exactly happened okay. so let me simulate with the our standard way it is very is small case okay so if you look at here we have a in place of u we have a u relative okay pressure omega so uh, that is what we are solving for k omega type of the models okay so here we have a turbulence property in place of turbulence we have a Rance property because we are working with the extended version so there is a couple of difference between extended version and the uh, release version so extended version we have a Rance property there we have a turbulent property so don't uh, confuse yourself okay uh, it is very straightforward in place of the turbulent property we have a Rance property all other setting almost remain same okay? 
So we are working k omega base model and here is few model constant if you want to change you can tune it okay and we have a system folder inside control dict and uh, in place of u now we have u relative as a uh, our variable okay and for that we are using with the smooth solver you can change it to the different solver and we are working with the orthogonal mesh so no non orthogonal correction is required okay so let me see so we are getting the convergence not a issue okay so let's see uh, how the solution is look like okay so this is the our inlet let's go to the last entry okay and let me take all the variables so we have a relative velocity so because of the centrifugal forces the velocity is going to change definitely within this entire domain so let's look at at some particular cross sections so this is how because of the centrifugal forces this is how the entire velocity is varying or changing okay so this is its uh, vector plots okay and it is uh, rotating okay so it because of rotation it try to trigger few more uh, uh, forces that is the correlation centrifugal forces let's say it's not rotating that what you observe it's just top to bottom flow is passing that is what we uh, going to observe but here it is rotating so we have a certain f uh, f few things we observe so what different changes we observe as far as the setting is concerned we have to we have a srf property inside the srf property we specify the rpm mm and the axis along with that few more changes you going to observe inside the uh, at a boundary condition level so at the velo relative velocity inlet let's look at we in place of the normal velocity we have srf velocity okay so srf velocity and uh, uh, uniform value we are giving okay absolute cartesian velocity we are giving here okay and based on that it try to calculate the uh, internal value Okay, and uh, relative yes, that means uh, uh, rotation is subtracted from the inlet value. Okay, so when we say relative is yes, what it mean? It mean that whatever the value, uh, initial value we are specifying. Okay, so it it going to use here. So uh, from this initial value specified, which value? Whatever the value we specified here, that is uh, initial value. Okay. So from that inlet or initial value, whatever we are saying, from this value, okay, this is what in the uh, our inertia frame. So please understand here, this is that value, okay. And from this on the inlet, based on this RPM, whatever we specified, it try to calculate the relative velocity, okay. When we say relative is yes, okay. So uh, if if we uh, say no, that means whatever we specified, uh, this inlet value that means this one okay if we say no what it mean it mean that whatever is specified here it exactly applicable to the relative velocity but if we want to take into account the effect of um, our omega we can say yes relative equal to yes so this is what we specify in z direction minus 10 and into we say omega into r okay so along with that uh, we can calculate the relative velocity so this is one uh, difference you can observe uh, as far as the velocity is concerned and where exactly this is coded it is available at a uh, particular same folder from where we look at this srf model so at the srf model area if you go little bit back we have a uh, uh, here we have a uh, patch velocity okay and from here we have srf patch velocity field okay so from here we can see how exactly it is specified the key name is srf velocity that we going to use at a here and what entry it required it required the relative yes or not or the inlet velocity and based on that it try to calculate the value at a um, particular patch okay so that is how uh, it is going to calculate it inside the uh, so if relative is equal to yes then it try to look at the srf velocity so uh, and this velocity is coming from 
which area it coming from SRF this velocity area okay from here it try to calculate the velocity okay and based on that uh, it try to ultimately change this value like this way okay so uh, that is uh, very very clear from this entry okay so we have this and the uh, SRF velocity and the inlet value whatever we specified this is inlet value and this is SRF velocity uh, that we are going to get from the uh, this particular model okay so this is the omega and from this is nothing but the axis of rotations okay so axis uh, so this give you the r so from here we calculate the velocity and that velocity goes here srf velocity okay so like that way one can calculate the uh, and this patch we calculating on the inlet patch okay so that is the change we observe inside the you know, boundary condition area okay so that is how one can see exactly how it is implemented inside this particular patch field okay here it is in, in uh, implemented okay so this is the change what we observe here so let us uh, see how exactly the flow is behaving let me uh, load few more slide here one minute okay. so i hope it is over yeah it is done whatever for a few iteration i run it so let's see how exactly it look like okay so let's cut the uh, section planes okay let's a z section plane and on this let's look at all the variables so let me activate all the variables here okay and on this let's look at the relative velocity how it's changing okay. so let me show you like this way so over a time okay uh, because it is rotating and look important it is cyclic that means whatever is coming here it's passing from here or whatever is uh, going out it entering from here and whatever is uh, going out it entering from here so it is visible from this vector point plot so look whatever is going out it going to enter from here and whatever is uh, going in okay this is all uh, in okay so out so this is a cyclic so when we specify the cyclic we have a certain setting inside the constant file so polymesh boundary conditions go this area and here we have a cyclic bc on the uh, both the side and here we specify the cyclic so immediately on the relative for that particular patch we're going to specify the cyclic for all the mm, our field variables so like that way one can quickly check how exactly and what is happening here so let me quickly show you few things so this is at the beginning okay and then so slowly be able to generate the rotational uh, values so look here it is going out and that much going to enter from this side okay so it is rotating with the 5000 rpm so this is what we can see from this uh, entry okay and it is also going in the uh, z direction because our flow is in the uh, negative z direction so top to bottom the flow is going so that is what we observe from here Look, this is the change we observe finally okay so and we on the periphery we get a all the very nice rotating effects okay so this is how one can uh, quickly simulate the single frame of reference so please understand single reference frame that means entire domain is rotating with respect to particular axis without any take into account any um, any reference uh, any stationary part okay so we are interested let's say mixture is rotating and how it is mixing the entire flow with the help of the multiple blade so one can quickly uh, simulate like this way okay so basic understanding is something like this way we have to have these two forces inside the uh, our navistock equation so we try to incorporate that two forces with the help of this particular models srf models with the centrifugal force and that centrifugal force allow us to take into account the correlative force and cent uh, centrifugal forces so 
and that force is going to calculate based on the property what we specified as a SRF property RPM and the axis from the axis we able to calculate the uh, distance of each of the cell from the axis and RPM allow us to rotate the entire domain in particular directions okay so this is how one can quickly look at this uh, very simple test case so let's go to uh, one more test case here uh, we have a one additional test case but here if you look at we take into account only the cyclic BC because uh, again so here we take into account the cyclic BC why because if you look at the geometry so our cyclic patch okay so cyclic patch is like a planar surface first of all this is cyclic patch is planar surface and it exactly rotated by let's say 90 degree okay so that is why we can quickly say it is a uh, uh, periodic in nature so we that's why we specify the cyclic uh, only okay but in the next tutorial we're going to use some other uh, function is called the ggi generalized grid interface okay if the uh, patch is not aligned properly or the mesh distribution is different at that point of time we have to take into account this ggi uh, generalized grid interface so let's first observe this how exactly uh, this tutorial is look like then we try to explore few more entries here okay so let's me show you few things here so let's first try to open the readme file from this area okay so readme file first we have to uh, clean the case so let's clean the case and then we try to generate the mesh so i have a dot uh, mp m4 file and from that we try to create the block mesh okay so and then that is block mesh dict file is created now we able to run the uh, block mesh command so block mesh is generated okay so block mesh is done now uh, let first look at the para form how it look like okay so this is how exactly our uh, geometry is look like at present okay so this is very coarse mesh and we constructed uh, some axial turbine type of the case so let uh, first we uh, l transform the geometry at a required place and then we uh, start uh, exploring the test case then we have to scale down this okay so uh, scale up so scaling the point okay so in the y direction we scale to 20 so let's look at how it look like now so look this is how it look like at present in the y we scaled okay so it is till now distorted and then we uh, transform cyclic to cart okay so we are uh, utilizing certain uh, utilities okay so if you do that this is now we able to twist the entire uh, geometry okay so that is the idea in the first case it is almost straightforward mm. but uh, we want to construct particular axial turbine so we follow this particular steps okay so cell to cart it uh, with respect to the particular um, uh, axis and the vector we able to generate the uh, distorted geometry very quickly okay but if you your if you have your geometry uh, that you constructed from icm or another you can import and uh, also you able to work with that okay now let's uh, copy the our original files okay so now let's do the check mesh so if you look at the check mesh okay so we have a total 1400 uh, element only okay but to facilitate certain things we required uh, some um, more information so what information we required is something like this way we have to rely on some batch files okay so first let me show you the mesh okay so this is our uh, mesh at present okay and uh, do we don't have a uh, 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 okay along with that we have a some particular zones so this is rotor zone it is entire zone only okay but we gave the particular name to entire zone so from where this name is appearing so for that let me show you the block mesh files so that name is coming from the block mesh file so block mesh file is available in the poly uh, constant poly and here in the block mesh okay this is the uh, block mesh file and uh, this is all name and everything okay 
and here is the number of blocks so it if you remember from our previous all the cases we didn't give any name here okay uh, let me open our any of the basic module tutorial okay let's say simple form kvt square cavity any mesh file system and block mesh okay so here when we co constructed we didn't give any name here whatever the name you gave here that name is appear inside the uh, our uh, uh, cell zone name ultimately okay so here we gave the rotor as a cell zone name in this particular file here okay so all the zone all the cells is belong to the rotor uh, okay so like that way you can segregate the different different zone inside the block mesh file itself okay so that is how you can give the naming to the different different block okay and that name is available in the paraform as well with the help of that name we can do certain things okay so here also we gave all the uh, naming to the boundaries okay so that is available later on i will explain you this entry okay first let's look at this so now uh, what uh, else we required to set up the test case we have to run this set batch ggi uh, mm. because we want to create the generalized grid interface and for that we required the some uh, face uh, zones okay face set from the our uh, cyclic boundary zone so what we going to do we creating the face set okay uh, that is the face set and we are giving the name as a face cyclic one okay so we are constructing the uh, new zone out of it so let me first run this and then i will uh, try to uh, uh, give you the idea okay so set set is the command with the help of that you can run this uh, particular file okay so sorry so set sets okay so what it uh, going to do it's it try to construct few things okay so let's see our total cell is that much our total faces is that much okay and point and all the informations uh, so face set uh, so recycling zone is available so let me first show you here okay so here we have a uh, uh, cyclic one and cyclic two okay ruzi uh, so from that we want to construct the uh, its zone okay so zone is what whatever the number of cell that is attached to that particular cyclic boundary we require that cell information because now we want to give the gridded uh, generalized grid interface at that point of time we require that that cell that is attached to that cyclic or the periodic boundary it's also uh, tap in different name that is the idea behind that okay so we require this particular name here so look from this one cyclic bc uh, from where that cyclic bc is coming it is coming from the block mesh area that is this its name okay and from that we try to construct the its cell zone because that is the zone that is attached with that particular file okay and then uh, we constructed the zone the new zone and then we want to transfer that zone to appropriate location for that it is called set zone no no flip flap okay when you do that what going to happen in the set field we previously there is only rotor we able to add few more zones and that zone is required to facilitate the grid generalized grid interface okay so first look at the poly mesh file and the boundary file from there we start understanding so this is the gen uh, ggi this interface so why this interface required let me first give you the brief idea about that then we again look at this all the entries so you will understand better way so look this is our uh, geometry okay now previously we have this two cyclic bc okay so look let me show you this uh this is one side and another side okay so let me show you the its mesh okay so this is how it look like but if you look at here it is twisted in the previous case it is not twisted now it is twisted so i cannot straight away apply the uh, cyclic interface in between these two patch in the similar line at the bottom patch if you look at it is twisted in nature okay so whatever is what i want whatever is uh, going out it's supposed to enter from here or whatever is uh, going out it's supposed to enter from here so that is how i require the cyclic bc so but it is completely twisted so i cannot straight away apply this class of the cyclic uh, uh, boundary for that what i require i require that number of the cell uh, 
uh, is attached with this if I tap that so it will help me to uh, do the interpolations so face to cell that's why I want to tap that cell and for this we have a generalized grid interface it allow us to interpolate this class of the uh, boundary but we require the generalized grid interface with the cyclic BC so you have a uh, GI GGI only you have a cyclic GGI okay for that this is our patch let's say this is one of our patch this is one patch okay this side and this patch uh, we what we say it has a number of face equal to 40 if you count the total number of face its number of face equal to 40 and on that particular face okay uh, what is the shadow face for this is the shadow face is this one this one is its shadow face what is mean by shadow face that means whatever is entering or leaving it related to this shadow face okay so that is why it's shadow face and the zone attached to this particular uh, uh, patch is uh, this particular zone okay rule rule cyclic c1 zone that we created with the help of this uh, set batch g ggi okay so what we did face set we add uh, we try to extract the cell based on the face so we say face set the new name okay and patch to face and this is the patch if you use this command we able to construct the new cell zone that is name with this so let's uh, explore now let's say we also incorporate this cell zone and cell set here okay so when you incorporate it, look this uh, sets is available now with us okay so previously we have only cell zone as a rotor everything okay now with the help of this we constructed this new zone okay so this is how we can see this name as a new zone here okay and with the help of that we can try to uh, uh, arrange or try to uh, 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 do the interpolation wherever we require so that is what we constructed okay this is uh, as a set level okay so set zone is created like this way so it what it going to give you it try to give you the connectivity between the two interface from the one side to the another side that is what we uh, uh, apply at a boundary file so this is how this is one part and what we required its shadow is here so for uh, shadow part uh, this is for this the uh, its shadow is this one okay and what is uh, what ex uh, what we required axis of rotations angle of rotations okay and uh, if there is a, a transitional uh, translation uh, boundary then we have a separated offset but it is a rotational so we specify this rotational okay and uh, we required its zone as well so that is attached with that particular patch okay so like that way we can uh, construct the ggi base cyclic boundary okay so now uh, let try to run the case and before that first understand again what we exactly did okay so let me again clear the case okay so it give us the better idea so we first uh, create the run the block mesh and construct the basic mesh then whatever the twisting geometry we required we executed this to command okay so let's say now our uh, geometry is ready to go okay but what uh, up to now if you do the check mesh okay what you're going to uh, observe sorry check mesh is not working because zero folder is not available okay so until unless you have a zero folder check mesh is not going to work so don't be panicked okay so then what what we do we uh, first create the zero folder then check mesh going to work okay so check mesh you can see the different name of the patch okay this is a cyclic patch now with this cyclic patch what we required we uh, because if the patch is like a uh, planar surface that we observe in the first tutorial mixing then we need not to go for ggi then we say simply cyclic but let's say whatever the patch on which we require the cyclic it is twisted in nature then we require the ggi as a grid generalized grid interface so to facilitate that we have a certain uh, step by step process for that we going to use this uh, set batch ggi so face set we going to create a uh, name is um, this one and based on the uh, whatever the name we have here so with the that face set is 
entry is required at a boundary uh, uh, file level okay so that is what we needed so let quickly uh, run the command okay so we able to transfer uh, that into the polymesh files to the cell zone okay, so that is what we require so if you go to the polymesh and uh, phase zones okay inside the phase zone you will see this two additional zone that is available okay and each zone has a 40 faces attached with that and that will facilitate the um, GGI interface uh, for uh, interpolation point of view okay so this is how one can uh, quickly set the uh, GGI based things so let's say you construct your own geometry okay in let's say ICM or any of the things and give a proper name and with the help of that name we can uh, specify the entire of this uh, settings inside of uh, this uh, open form so we try to explore the tutorial as well okay so right now we are working with the block mesh uh, so that is available with us very quickly we can uh, see few things here okay then let's run the case okay so it is a very very coarse mesh okay so it's going to finish very quickly there are form So this is the mesh file twisted okay this is cyclic bc both the side okay and let me quickly cut the case okay. on this let's uh, explore all the variables how it look like here is the u value sorry this is relative velocity this is absolute velocity that we stored from this okay and let me quickly show you the vector plots so look whatever is going out from here it is going to enter from here so that is uh, going to appear for everywhere okay okay so wherever you go going to appear any location okay so that is how one can check the grid grid interface okay so that is a uh, very simple way you can specify if the our geometry is twisted in nature then it uh, we have to work with the ggi okay geometry that means our the boundary cyclic bc or anything what we are uh, whatever we want to consider okay so let me quickly show you again so here we, if we look at the entire our geometry it is twisted okay and this is axial turbine something like this way portion of axial turbine uh, so this portion and this portion we want to uh, consider as a cyclic in nature so that's why we go with the ggi and entire of this domain is rotating with the help of the uh, our standard uh, control srf property so we have a axis and the rpm of rotations okay so that is how one can quickly check and parallelly one can also check uh, in the zeroth folder all the entries okay so as srf velocity okay so we are not here specifying the relative we say water is entering is straight away goes as a inertia frame of uh, reference okay so these few things and here uh, here we specify the ggi cyclic okay so this is how one can uh, specify the uh, all the entries in the boundary condition level okay so this is our uh, axial turbine so very quickly one can set the test case in this uh, particular environment so here entire of the x uh, turbine is rotating with a uh, provided z axis and the 